What's up guys? Today we're going to install a new brake setup on the 95 Civic. We're going to be trying out and testing out the Jack Spaniel Racing setup that he is now going to be producing. This setup has not been released to the public yet. He's still working out some fitment issues here and there, but hopefully he has those resolved soon and gets those, gets those introduced to the market. He's also introducing a second caliper setup that has a little bit different design up here. I don't know if it's gonna be same caliper with the internals and everything, just a little different look, but we'll find out more when he has those released. Now, when talking to the owner and reading some of his posts and stories, when he created this kit, he wanted his main competition to be the block setup. Now, the blocks one is really nice. I've seen it on a lot of cars as well. And I'd actually purchased it before he came out with his kit. I was going to put this on my Y49. I just wanted a nice, a nice brake kit to complement that car and get rid of the stock calipers and rotors. But still a nice kit. This one fits all the 90 to 2000 Civic EX and SI knuckles. And also the 90 to 01 Integra. So it's the larger, the larger 10.2 diameter. His kit is actually for the smaller spindles. This is an 11.2 inch rotor. It requires a caliper bracket to put onto your knuckle. And then you can, of course, bolt up the caliper. So his kit is actually more similar to the larger Willwood kit. The Willwood requires a bracket as well to mount the caliper. And then it's just a larger one and it only fits the DX knuckles. The reason it doesn't fit is for, just for purposes of showing you this is an ef dx this is an ek dx lx whatever you want to say small this is a eg big so this off 95 civic the reason it doesn't fit the hub diameter from the wheel stud to the outer diameter is a lot bigger on all the base models it's smaller and it fits perfectly fine on there so now fits only the small Small hubs, which is great because a lot of people out there have those and you don't necessarily need to look for them. Now, fortunately, if you're running like an Integra already, like all those require the 10.2 the inch setup. So you can't even run it on there without potentially doing what I had just mentioned. So we're going to get this installed, see if there's anything along the way that uh, we're encountering any issues on these hubs. I don't think so. Like it's already fitting on the EF one and I'm not having any issues. I removed the pads just because I want to spin it make sure there's no fitment or rubbing issues but it seems to be perfectly fine on here let's get it installed on here really quickly and see if there's any issues that I encounter along the way and I can go over those as well before I actually get into the install I'm gonna go over a couple more items like the Jack Spaniel kit comes with included brake lines which is nice the Willwood kit I had to buy them separately you need a certain brake line they're called flex lines that that's, that's what they call it, their line it was required for the willwood setup these i believe just can use looks like they could probably use the stock brake line on there um i'll probably um, my car already has a uh, stainless steel so i don't know if that'll work but regardless i don't think it requires any sort of brake line on the blocks the pad size from blocks to jack spania this one just looks larger it's actually thicker I don't know what the composition is of, of the brake pad. We haven't really talked about that yet or how, how long or how grippy it, it's supposed to be along with brake dust. But obviously, a lot of these brake kits, some of them are never really used. They're just kind of used for looks on the car, like an upgraded mod, but you'd have a lot more life with that pad. One thing I liked way better was his calipers were packaged inside here. You can even see the impressions from the caliper. The blocks was wrapped in some plastic and then it was just banging around in the box. And it's, you could tell it got a little beat up. I mean, just a little better packaging would be great. And the only reason I don't like that is because on the caliper, you can see like dull spots where it's kind of like rubbed down, maybe from rubbing around. I'm sure it'll be just fine. But regardless, a little bit better packaging would be a little nicer alternative for that. But let's get started. Let's get this thrown on and see if we can button it all up today. After getting the Willwood setup off, one obvious difference is just the size. Like that obviously is gonna create less, more problems with fitment. I don't know if these can fit anything smaller than 15, but they might, they're pretty uh, small, but just the size of the rotor. Here you can see a little bit of a difference in sizing, that 0.2 
inches from the wheel wood here and the jack spaniel on the back side. The, let's see, the pads, they look pretty similar in size. There's obviously just more thickness again to, well, not necessarily, yeah, a little bit more on the jack spaniel one. And the four, four pistons in here, a little smaller. These look a little just beefier. Maybe it's kind of the same size and looks really similar in diameter. I don't know if you'd be able to tell. This just is a bigger, a bigger cup, but the overall diameter seems really similar in size from the two. But really quick to take it off, I just drained the, the master cylinder so that way there's not as much of a mess everywhere. And let's get these things thrown on now. One thing I'm really liking is that the brake lines have this little rubber grommet on there and it has a mount, which you can slide on and actually bolt it up to the factory locations. Comes with both the bolts and the washers to seal off the brake line on the caliper. The Wheelwood kit didn't even have any sort of provision to mount it. So I was using zip ties onto the brake mount location. So it's nice that it has that additionally included. All right guys, we got the passenger side installed, easy. Everything bolted up as it should. I don't have any sort of issues with it fitting. There's nothing in terms of binding. Obviously the pads are a little loose. I don't have any fluid in there. I just wanna make sure everything fit up here well. Um, that bracket, ended up bolting it up right there and then fed the brake line back here. It'd be cool if I had a second one. Maybe that's something we could add. Um, and then bolt that one up there, but I'm just gonna throw a zip tie on there. And the reason I wanted to do that is just test everything. I always leave the, the key in, make sure the brake line is not hitting anywhere, but no, nothing at all. One thing I love about this brake line is the fitting. Let me show you the other one. Now you guys are familiar with the brake line holder. This little piece normally slides in and holds these two together. This line has its own nut on here now. So when you put this up through the bottom, you will feed the other one on top. And then it's nice because I was able to position the line, like spin it around to where I liked it, where it didn't seem to have any sort of like like play because you know the line's a little bent it's been curled up it just seemed to work a little better in this direction and then i left it a little bit loose got everything kind of on here and then start tightening it up and i'll have it tightened up with the fitting in there i like that it's really nice to put in there i'll probably drop some of the loctite 290 in there this is a uh, for captive bolts, when they're already tight and you put it in there, it helps go in there and seal. I'll probably just drop some in there so that nut doesn't back loose. I actually added some to the mounting, the hex head mounting bolts, both of those there, and also the two that mount from, they're going from this side, from the spindle to the caliper bracket. But to get the pads out, hadn't talked about it already, you just need to remove this Allen head bolt. And well, it just kind of all fell out. The little bracket there and the little cylinder, and then you could slide your pads in or out. Just like that. Very easy to get those installed. All right, passenger side is now complete. Both sides are done. Need to get the system bled. I'm gonna do this off camera really quickly. I'm gonna change my master cylinder. For those of you that do not know, 9091 Civic EX, which is the 15 16 it bolts up perfect to the EGs. Even the brake lines mount up in the same position. So we're gonna upgrade that really quick. I had this one laying around from the white hatchback and get that upgraded to help offset the larger brake setup that is now on here. When I had the Wilwoods on here with the 13 16 it didn't feel as, as tight as I feel like it could have. Probably amount of pressure slash fluid in there. So we're gonna throw that on really quickly, get this whole setup bled, and I'll get some, let's get some miles put on it, make sure that it's okay, and I'll report back in another section of this video. So we got the new 
master cylinder installed. All four corners are bled. I did not have any issues bleeding these calipers. Went perfectly fine. I started with the inside and then went to the outside. I actually did the entire car twice. I did it once and I did it again just because I want to make sure there was any old fluid out. I had not done that since I've had this car. So now the fluid's all nice and fresh in there. Nothing special, just some Prestone Dot 3 like brake fluid that I keep around the garage just for everyday use. Um, one thing I really like is that these are ended up being 11 millimeter wrench and they come with these covers, which are really nice. They're actually, they were a little tough to get off, which is nice. So I doubt they will come off at all. Help protect those. But yeah, everything's done here. Let's get the wheels put back on. Let's get this thing on the road. Let's go give it a, a road test. All right guys, and I've kind of reached a point of this video where there's nothing else I can really talk about or go forward with. What I want to do next is we have a track day in about two weeks and I want to take it out there and get some, some real abuse put on these brakes. Street driving, I don't think, I don't think there's gonna be anything wrong with it. I've driven about 50 miles on it. You can see a little bit of wear and tear on there. I drove it to the muffler shop, drove it around town a little bit just to see how it was feeling. And I wanted to try to bed the pads as well as possible, followed a similar method to the wheel which set up. But I have zero issues so far. They fit perfectly fine. They clear these 15 by eight plus 32s. And I had any no issues with the mounting brackets, the brake lines, the caliper, everything just went as smoothly as, smoothly as you'd expect and hope. So we get some track footage out there next. And I'll give you another uh, video on that so I can get you an idea. We can take a look at them as well. If there is anything that's wrong, anything premature falling apart, I don't, I don't, I don't expect anything to be wrong. It should be perfectly fine. They've worked thus far, and see how that does out there. I'd like to do a rear disc upgrade next. It's kind of funny how these really nice big brakes set up in the front, and then the rear got the drums still. Um, I don't know if the drums still have good uh, brake shoes in there, but that's a another. Another day I'd like to get out here and swap over a rear disc set. I actually have them sitting in the garage over there too, but haven't had a chance to get those put on. Another small clip that I included in here was when I drove the car, I drove it to the muffler shop and I got the three inch muffler set up put on there. So we'll go over a full video on the muffler. He uh, recently got into those, the mufflers and catbacks and I took off my buddy club. So I went from a two point two five inch setup over to the full three inch. And I'll talk about the muffler piping as well in the next video that I make on this entire setup. But thanks for watching guys. Hope you liked the video and I'll get you another video soon. 
once that track day is completed, I'll have a little bit of footage and I'll mainly talk about the brakes. I'll put a couple different wheels on here. I have a, like a couple 15 by sevens that are like plus 38, plus 35. I don't know if these will clear like the RPF ones. The 15 by seven RPF ones seem to have issues with bigger brake kits. I don't have any to test, unfortunately, but don't know if they'll fit. I don't think they'll clear like a, a maybe like a plus 35, plus 25. I think uh, the lower the offset, the better. I think the high offsets, like the plus 45s and plus 40s, you may not clear, but we'll talk about that in that video as well. But thanks for watching, guys. Thanks always to Jack Spania for taking care of me and love the products he's putting out still. Still keeps moving forward, and this brake setup is badass. Hope you guys enjoyed the video today. We'll see you soon.